Hey guys, it's Megan Ritz with Classic Cakes, and today we are going to cover a cake in a marbled fondant. Um, we're going to do a colored marbled fondant, and I'm going to show you the difference between um, doing a black or a gray marbling and a colored marbling. is a little bit different. And um, I'm going to pull us up here on Facebook so I can see comments. Let me reload this page. Um, I would love to know if you guys are watching this live or on the replay. So um, when you jump on, go ahead and comment, say hi. Um, and we've been talking a lot about if we want to do this, continue doing these videos on Facebook Live or if we want to move it over to YouTube. Um, so if you have a preference between watching things on YouTube or Facebook, um, please comment and let me know which you prefer. That will help us quite a bit. We just want to make sure that we are as accessible to everyone as possible um, and making it easy for everybody. So I'm just finding us here on my laptop so I can see comments and we'll get started playing with some marbling with fondant. Um, any questions that you guys have, please go ahead and comment. Let me know if I miss anything. I will um, definitely go back and answer those questions at the end. Okay, so I've got comments going over there. We got stuff. Um, a couple of housekeeping items I just wanted to share with you guys real quick. We're super excited. Um, our donation drive project for Riley Children's Hospital. Um, we are collecting donations to be able to donate 3,000 cupcakes for the staff of Riley Children's Hospital. It's been um, a logistical lots of logistical problem solving to be able to do this um, but we've had several donations from individuals um, as well as companies and so we are super close to our goal um, to be able to do this basically anything that you donate 100% of that goes towards covering our costs so that we can do this um, there's a lot of restrictions we have to individually package all the cupcakes and label them so it's just kind of expensive compared to what we normally do and any Thing multiplied by 3,000 becomes expensive. Um, so this is our way of connecting with you guys, being able to give back to the community um, while also being able to actually afford to do that during this time. So we are um, super close to the goal. So we are asking 10 people to each donate $10 and then we will hit our goal. So super excited about that. Um, our plan is to be able to make these cupcakes for the end of the month and then the first weekend in May be able to deliver the cupcakes. So we're working with the hospital very closely on coordinating that delivery because there's, again, with the epidemic that we're dealing with right now, there's a lot of logistical things that we have to do, but we are working with them. They are super excited and we're excited to be able to do something um, as wild as this during a time like this. So thank you for the donations that you guys have been providing and sharing so that other people can donate as well. Um, Personally, it's really encouraging to be able to focus on spreading joy and giving back during a time that's very scary. Um, I think it's kept me sane to be able to focus on what we can do for other people and not worrying about um, what's going on here as much. So thank you so much. Um, having said that, it's insane. We are down to a very minimal staff um, because, you know, every wedding, Every um, major event, even small events, have canceled. So that's really what we spend all of our time doing is making cakes for big events. So if it was not for our customers, you guys, pulling together and ordering all these little cakes just to have cake at home, to send them to friends and family through a cake fairy program, our phones are ringing all the time, um, we would not be surviving this right now. And we are, thanks to you guys. So thank you so much. Um, if you've kept up with what's going on in Classic Cakes, this is my first year as owner. So this is just a very crazy time. And you know, Eileen, the woman who founded Classic Cakes has even been helping us out. She hunted down, um, what's it called? Hand sanitizer for us, because as you know, it's everywhere, it's hard to find. She actually found some out of state and went and got that for us. So it's all hands on deck. Um, working to make this work and I just want to thank you guys last week we had 127 cakes that we did 
and to be able to say that during a time like this is unreal so thank you so much please keep ordering um, I think unfortunately we have a long way to go still but we are staying afloat and we're going to continue doing everything that we can to give back and spread joy during this time so thank you so much um, having said that we are having a hard time keeping up with requests please don't stop ordering cakes because it is keeping us alive but um, we are taking orders through email, so cake at classiccakescarmel.com, and we will get you taken care of. Um, so, every I've switched around the live schedule to being every Tuesday night. We're going to call it Tutorial Tuesdays, um, just because we are kind of sporadically crazy here, and it was getting hard for me to keep on that schedule that we had before. So, Tuesday nights, 8 p.m. Eastern Central, Eastern Standard Time, um, we'll be here on Facebook with our live videos. So let's get into the cake. We are going to, let me get this out of my way. Hey everybody. Terry, I love it. Thank you so much. <laughs> I love it. Terry is always on here watching our videos and commenting too. So thank you so much. Um, so today we're going to cover cake and fondant. We're going to color the fondant and we're going to marble. So I've got some colors. We're going to do some royally purpley blues and black um, I've got my tool set up so fondant coloring gloves um, powdered sugar shaker rolling pin um, we talked about this before on the video where I covered a cake and fondant which we're gonna do again today but if you want more specific details if you're actually wanting to cover a cake and fondant watch that video there's a lot of detail in that um, this is the kind of rolling pin I recommend it is the same like smooth flat all the way across it's not tapered on the ends um, it makes it a lot easier to roll up on it with something like that some kind of cutter pizza wheels work great and then I love my Zacto knife for very detailed work so um, not necessary but if you're really getting in close and wanting perfect details then that's very helpful so I pulled a couple of our display cakes from out front out front um, that have marbling on them just to show you what it, we're going for this guy has been sitting out there for probably a year so you can see like the gold is turning green and we've got some fading that's okay um, she's old but she's still pretty so this is a example of a gray marbled fondant if you see a little bit of a purple hue that's because it's been sitting around for a year and so it's starting to fade um, but what you're going for, like for me, I love these loops. We want some of these lines, um, but we want lots of dark lines and then some of the faded lines. But you want a range of that marbling. You don't want all dark lines or all faded lines. You want a range. So that's the trick, and I'll show you my secret to how to do that. So you can see these guys here are a really good example. Even in this medium, we have some darker lines that are bold and really going to pull your eye. So this is a good example um, of what you're going for. And then we just painted in the gold. So you can always do that um, as well. So that is one of them. We call her Penelope. We love her. And then I've got another one here. This is a big hoss. I've got a bunch of comments up here. Sorry. Lots of text. Um, so hi Patrice. Hi, Katie. Terry, are all of your cakes female? Um, yes, I think they may be. Um, they very well may be. So, um, here is a colored marbled fondant. So this is a very dark, very deep one. So the more color you have, the more saturated your color, the less detail you're gonna see because they're gonna fade together and the darker color is gonna take over. So we did some yellow, like ochre and some orange with this black. And you can see it's not as, there's not as many like little frilly faded lines. It's very dark. Um, so it just depends what you're going for. I love this right here. Let me just spin her all the way around. This right here, where you have these, this range of color. Um, and that's when you're marbling, you really have to think about your colors and what colors are going to marble together because you're going to have fade so if you're marbling like 
If somebody wanted a burgundy marble, they're gonna end up with pink in their cake. As long as they know that ahead of time, then there's no problem. Um, if they're wanting blue and pink together, then they're gonna end up with some purple when those colors like blend together. So you just wanna think about what colors. You know, if you do green and orange, you're gonna end up with some not so pretty brownish, orangey, yucky color when those colors blend together. Okay, so fondant. We make our own fondant here in-house. You do not have to. There are several awesome brands on the market. Um, Dream Fondant is probably the closest to what we use here texture-wise. Um, it's a firm fondant, um, which makes it a little bit more forgiving. Um, you'll notice a trend. A lot of the products that we use here, we use because they're user-friendly. Um, so we have perfected these recipes to make sure that when we use them, we get what we want out of them. Um, this is a white chocolate based fondant. You can look up recipes online. Um, no, we will not share our recipe, but there's lots of recipes online. You can find one very similar, I'm sure. Um, and like I said, you can buy dream fondant. There's all kinds of different types of fondant, like marshmallow fondant. Um, they work just fine, but they are not as easy to use. They are very soft in my experience, and they stretch almost too much, so when you go to pick it up, it like wants to stretch more. And you want something that stretches so that you have that easy to use and stretch it out, but it doesn't easily tear. So it's kind of hard to find that exact perfect spot. So, because this is chocolate based, I'm gonna knead it, warm it up with my hands, and I'm gonna do a white base for our marble, and I'm gonna do some navy and some like deep royal purple. Um, mostly because I've never done that and I wanna see what it looks like, um, but also I wanna show you some bold colors and how they're gonna blend together. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna start with three balls three smushed blobs. Um, <laughs> I'm going to leave one perfectly white, um, probably more than one, and I'm going to color these guys in the darkest color because that color is going to fade out so I don't have to worry about the lighter colors. They're going to appear. Um, another way to do it is to have quite a big range of color, but I want to we're going to do it a couple of different ways. Let's see what happens. So I'm going to color half of one of these a nice royal purple and the other half like a navy blue. Um, and I'm going to show you my tricks for coloring fondant because it is very messy to color fondant. The first thing you want is a clean surface and lots of powdered sugar. Like an excessive amount. This is my mess station here, we'll call it. And then I also have a trash can, which is a clean bag in it. And I'm gonna put it right here and I'm gonna work directly over this. So any dripping of color is gonna go straight into the trash can and not on the floor and not on my table. Let's see. All right, so let's start with, let's start with my navy. So I've got royal blue here. When you're coloring fondant, you want to use a gel color. I like CK Americolor is pretty good as well. Um, CK is an Indiana company, so we especially are grateful and um, thankful that they are good quality so that we can feel good about using them. Um, so um, let me do it over here. So I am, I made a well and I just poured all of it in the middle and I'm taking the sides and rolling it over. So I'm making like a little, you guys ever have like pork dumplings or those little steamed bread Chinese pocket things? Why can't I think what they're called? Dumplings, where you take the bread, you put the meat in the middle and then you roll it over the top. We're kind of doing that and we're just pulling that through 
So you can see the colors coming up here, but I've got this big old puddle in the middle of my color. And this is just how I'm gonna keep it from making a huge mess. And if I spill it, I'm spilling it into a trash can, so I don't really care. And I've got gloves on so my hands don't turn weird colors. So this is not a very quick process, but it does work. So you can see I'm just rolling that color through. And you see I still have a nice puddle in the middle, but all this color is coming through and I'm not making a huge mess. Because the one thing that really is frustrating about coloring fondant is when you have this big like gluey mess on the table because it got wet and sticky, uh, like a bread dough or something. No, it's not fun to work with. Pot stickers, Melissa. Thank you for the help. I love it. Pot stickers. <laughs> you think I would know what it was called? I eat them all the time and I make them. Heather, Kirsten, Chris, thank you guys. All the K names popped in at the same time. All right, so we got a nice royal blue going. Maybe we'll do royal. Should we do navy blue or royal blue, you guys? Okay, once I have my pool in here, then I'm gonna just take a little bit of the powdered sugar, make sure my hands aren't wet, and I'm just gonna knead it. So exact same process. When I knead, I use the heel of my hand, and I push down and I fold it over. Just like you would bread rolls, pizza dough. Do you guys, uh, Throw me some hearts if you want to see royal blue. Throw me some thumbs up if you want to see navy blue. Let's see what we love here. Hearts for royal blue. Thumbs up for navy blue. All right, so we got a nice royally. Let's add a little bit of purple. I like... Dibby, thanks for joining us again. Patrice, I hope I'm saying your name right. It's very far away. How do I add dark colors and not change the texture of the fondant? It tends to change texture when I try it. Does it get really soft and like droopy? Is that what you mean? Um, I have the same problem. Lots of hearts. All right, we want some royal, it looks like. Awesome. I'm gonna add just a teeny tiny bit of purple here. I love complicated colors where you have different layers. Eileen, thank you for joining again. I love it. We are just talking about you, you amazing woman. Um, I like adding lots of different colors together instead of just having, oh. So when I don't have a whole lot, I like to stretch and fold. It's just a faster way when I don't have that big gluey like puddle in the middle. Um, to get the color going. Lots of hearts and thumbs up. I think the hearts are winning though, so we're gonna do a royal, a royal blue and a purple. And we're gonna marble it together and see what happens. Um, okay, so Patrice asked, when she adds lots of dark colors to the fondant, it changes texture. Why is that? So um, let's add a little bit more color to this and make it more vibrant, more saturated. So the more liquid you add, the softer your fondant is going to get um, and the harder to work with it is going to be. So one trick that we do here is if I was making like black fondant and like a big batch, then I would do it the day before or a few hours before and let it rest and it won't be quite so soft as that fondant absorbs all the excess liquid in there. So that's very helpful. Um, do you find that it's easier if you use your leftovers or the day after? I'm curious if that would work because I think different kinds of fondant is going to be a little bit different. All right, so we're almost there with our blue. And you can hear I'm sticky. So I can just take a little bit of powdered sugar and help with that. All right, so let's knead this out. So just a little bit of powdered sugar. The more powdered sugar you add, the drier your fondant's gonna be. And so I don't want it to be dry because then it will get like alligator skin when I roll it out. It'll get crunchy and crusty. 
So we want to keep it moist. We just don't want to stick and have a gluey mess. So just a little bit, just to dry my hands. Let's see, I love it, you guys. Dibby, I love seeing you pop up on there. Thank you. All right, so we've got a pretty royal blue here. Just a little bit of purple in it. I just like it. I think it's pretty. That's just because I like it. All right, so we've got royal blue. Now, I can use my blue hands to make purple. That's totally safe. That's fine, it's not gonna hurt the purple at all. Um, if I was making like yellow, I would wanna switch out my gloves. All right, so let's do some purple. So same thing, I'm gonna create a little pita pocket thing. What do we call it? Pot sticker pocket. I'm gonna put my color in here. Let's add a little bit of blue. Let's just mix it all up. We'll make it very royally blues and purples. So I have my little pocket and I'm gonna fold it over and I'm over a trash can. So whatever spills out, I don't care. And I've got a big crack here and it's spilling out. That's fine. We're just gonna roll it right back in. All right, so the last one, the blue that I made, made a very like easy and um, Paige, I'm so excited that you're getting a cake on Saturday. It's going to be beautiful. Um, made it look easy. This is a sticky mess. So, the blue one was agreeable. The purple one's not being as agreeable. It's totally fine. That's what the trash can is for. That's what the gloves are for. And I'm just going to take some powdered sugar and make sure my hands are nice and dusted. And we're gonna need. And you just wanna make sure that you're not sticking to the table too much. A little bit is fine, but you end up, if it's too wet, you end up with like a gluey mess. And that makes it really challenging. It looks like I've got a pretty good delay here, so. Patrice says when she's trying to make black, her fondant ends up sort of crumbly. Patrice, that is the opposite problem that I have. I would assume is the black fondant absorb is the fondant absorbing the black or is it just separating? Because it maybe the type of coloring or the type of fondant aren't supposed to work together. Let's see. Um, Doris, yes, we are using white chocolate fondant. And Terry asks, what colors are best to use for marble cake fondant? Any colors to avoid? Yes, beautiful question. Okay, so I'm just gonna make sure that I'm not sticky or wet over here. I've got a nice dry table. I'm gonna take my gloves off. No more wet yucky fondant. So, covered in powdered sugar. Colors, awesome question. You want to avoid colors that are going to blend together to make ugly colors. So think about colors that will blend together to make pretty colors. Like if you have pink and blue, they're going to blend together and make purple. If you have maroon, it's going to fade out into your white and make pinks. So you just want to think about what is it going to turn into. Any color is going to fade out and become lighter and then mix with any other colors that you have. So you definitely want to think about what kind of colors you're going to create. So um, let's go ahead and make some lighter ones. I'm gonna take a small ball of each of these guys and just mix them. We'll do half and half, roughly. So I've got purple and white. Let's do a blue and white. And we're just gonna mix these together to make a lighter blue and a lighter purple. Sherry asks, what kind of fondant do we use? We make our own fondant here in-house. It is a white chocolate based fondant. You can find recipes online um, or you can purchase Dream Fondant. Um, it is very similar in texture. All right, so half and half. We have a little bit of a range. Can you guys see these? Um, they're covered in comments there. So please throw me some hearts if that's still in your screen and you can see that. Um, so I recommend a white chocolate based fondant. I feel like it's more forgiving, um, easier to cover a cake with. It's not too soft, which I find marshmallow fondants tend to be too soft, but 
it just depends on what you're comfortable with. There's really, there's no magical right or wrong. Um, if what you're working with is not working, then try something different. All right, so we got awesome. Thank you for the hearts, guys. I love the feedback. All right, so we've got some purple here, and we've got some blue. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to get this pile of powdered sugar out of my way. Sorry, powdered sugar, I wasted you. Put my hands up on my apron. We're going to make fondant snakes. And you're not going to see my face, but that's okay. You'll see the table. So we're going to snake together. Um, and this is how you create the marble pattern. So I want a relatively cleaned off table. A little bit of powdered sugar is fine, but a lot will start to dry out. So you want to make sure that you're not drying out. Why is this not showing in the new comments? There we go. Hey, Ashley, thank you for joining us. Okay, so what we're going to do, I'm going to, let me move these out of the way. I'm going to start with my white, and I'm just going to make a giant snake. So I like to start with my hand, and then we'll just roll it out. It doesn't have to be pretty or perfect. Um, you hear me say that a lot on here. I feel like I say that every time I get on here. I want to give you guys permission. It does not have to be pretty and perfect. Practice makes progress. Just keep chugging along and you'll learn where you can get away with stuff and where you can't. Like right now, my table is not sticky enough. So my fun is rolling around. So even pressure with your hand, like the palm of your hand, and you can make nice long snakes. Marsha, hey, thank you for joining us. All right, so we're gonna roll out a bunch of snakes. Let's do, so the more snakes you have, the more lines your marbling will have. The more white you have, the more fading you'll be able to see. So my rule of thumb, what I like to do, is do about half white and half whatever other colors I have. Um, but it is just totally up to you. And I've never done this combination of colors, so I'm super excited to see what happens. And we just want all of our snakes to be about the same length. They do not have to be the same width. What I'm actually gonna do here because I'm just gonna tear this in half. I want this one to be thin, so I have nice, bold, thin lines of my dark purple. I'm just gonna keep rolling. And this is the, um, I guess the trick that we figured out, and when you roll it out, and how you fold it, which I'm going to show you once I have these rolled out, is really the secret to getting a beautiful marble pattern. Alright, so I'm just going to line up a bunch of these guys. How is the purple snake not staining your hands? Terry, excellent question. Not staining my hands because the fondant has absorbed all the color because I finished kneading it out. If I stopped before it absorbed all the color, then I would have stained hands. And every once in a while you'll see a little bit of that, but if you have it rolled out, like kneaded out all the way, then you don't have to worry about that. But I don't know if you guys can tell, but the, um, the colored fondant is a lot softer and it's also a lot um, stickier because it is wet, which makes all of this a little bit challenging, but that's okay. All right, so I have some thin ones. Let's do my lighter blue. I love it. Rebecca, yes, your party was one of our last like big hoo-hahs before everything shut down. I'm glad that party was crazy. I'm so glad you guys got to follow through on that. That would have been disappointing um, to miss, I'm sure. That looked like a lot of planning. 
Rebecca had a crazy awesome cowgirl themed, cowboy, cow person themed party. Western rancher themed party. I don't know what the theme was, but it was awesome. It looked like a real party. Like, not like my family does birthday parties. All right, so let's do some light purple. And then we're gonna roll up several more white ones. So that we, it was at a ranch, Rebecca. That's right, I saw pictures, it was gorgeous. I love when we get tagged in pictures. So many times, especially people pick up a cake, like we have no idea where it's going and what's happening with it. If we deliver, it's so cool to get to see like this crazy glamorous room, like wedding reception all set up and flowers are out and tables are set and decorations are out. And we're always there. We're one of the last vendors to arrive when we deliver wedding cakes. And uh, so everything's set up, but all the people are gone. So it's like we get to sneak in and out like the cake fairy. All right, so we've got those. Let's roll out some more white. Let's do this guy. And then we have this ball. So we're gonna roll out a few more white. Like I said, I like to do about half white. I feel like I get more fading, more lines, and everything stands out a little bit better. Kim, welcome. Yes, I would love to show you guys What's happening? I am eating the cake. <laughs> Terry, you're always cracking me up. Thank you. Very amusing, Terry. I love it. Um, Nancy. Okay, yes. All of these are, I mean, they're not, if you, you can't see. They're not exactly the same length, but you want to make them roughly the same length because anything that stands out in excess from that is wasted. Um, let's see. Tiffany, welcome. So Kim, welcome, you are on late, wanna know what we're making. So we are doing um, a colored fondant marbling. And I am rolling out all of these fondant snakes. We made some colors. We're gonna do blue and purple, really bold colors. Um, I've never done this this way, so we'll see what happens. Um, and we are just rolling out our snakes here. The table is being a little disagreeable, but fine nonetheless. We're gonna roll out some fondant, and then I'm gonna show you um, the really the secret to making a nice, beautiful fondant marbling pattern is the way that you combine these. So this next step is really the most important part of the marbling process. Rebecca said, your team has done a ton of event cakes for me over the years. Always awesome to work with you all. Thank you so much, Rebecca. We love getting to do that and getting to, you know, bring an idea to life that's unique or fun or suggest wild ideas, all of that. Let's see. So we're going to make a couple more snakes and then we are going to combine all of these. So when I make a snake, I always like to just kind of start it with my hand and then we'll roll it out on the table. And you want to use, you can see me like stretching my fingers out. That's kind of stretching it and pushing it that way. And then I'll take the palm of my hand to make nice smooth, even pressure. And I'm right handed, so I like to use my right hand a lot. Jamie, I have a consult with you guys in May for a wedding cake. Awesome, that is so cool. Um, anyone else who has wedding stuff going on right now, if you're planning, we are still doing cake tastings. We're doing a cake tasting kit that you can pick up curbside and then we'll do everything else online, making it super easy so you do not have to stop planning. All right, we're almost there. Jamie, have you looked at pictures? Do you have any idea what kind of cakes you're thinking of? Um, let's see. How is everybody?
Yesterday's Easter. Oh my gosh, I keep forgetting. Time is so weird right now. I keep forgetting Easter happened. Whether you celebrate or not, we had a nice weekend. We busted out. Um, we have a like smoker. Kind of an awesome grill. It has like three lids. So it has gas grill, charcoal grill, and then it has a smoker box, like a fire box. And so I really actually took the weekend mostly off. And um, I have a three year old, so this was his first time really doing egg hunt and really getting into all of that stuff. Let's see. Jamie said, my fiance is obsessed with flat white cakes. I'm hoping for some gold painting on it. Oh, Jamie, when you come in for your appointment, we can work some magic. We can, I mean, there are tons of beautiful just white ice cakes that we can do. Um, just making like the flowers or a topper, the star of the show. But um, happy to do sketches for you guys. And sometimes it's just a matter of Pulling an idea out that we, you guys didn't even know you had and then we can make magic happen. So bring all the ideas. Um, we have galleries on our website too and I, I know there's some painted galleries on there. We're just painting. Yes, flowers. Rebecca, is the naked cake trend done and over? What's your take? Okay, that's an excellent question. Um, it is not done and over. The naked cake trend will be here for a while. We really recommend people don't do fully naked cakes, that they do like a ice super thin, so it's almost like a glaze, so your cake doesn't dry out. All right, so we've got lots of colors here. So, um, all I'm gonna do <clears throat> is make sure, like I've got some white here, I'm gonna mash these together. So this is why you don't have to worry about your snakes being pretty, because we're just going to mash them all up. And my fondant's kind of dry, so we'll see. Maybe these won't stick together as well as I need them to. I'm not worried about it being perfect. I'm just mashing them all together. And you guys thought this had to be precise, didn't you? Was the tiger cake done in all fondant? Um... Ooh, let me remember. Um, it was done a lot in fondant. Um, it was done a lot in fondant. I don't know exactly how much. I'm trying to remember what we did. Let's put a blue right on top of the purple and see what happens. I have not done this combination of colors, so I don't know exactly what's gonna happen. So we're just mashing all of these together. Okay, and then here's where I really, this is where we want to make sure it's not sticking to the table. So this is where we're really going to make the pattern that we're going to see. So I like to do a couple of things. I like to twist it. And then we're going to make, so we're going to start with this in the middle. And then we're going to do this kind of zigzaggy pattern and then pull it into a blob. So we have like a zigzaggy, I don't know how well you guys can see that. So a zigzaggy blob, technical cake decorating terms. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna mash it. Let's see, and what I like to do here so I'm going to fold over a few times some of the pieces and we're really just mashing these. Every time you fold or spin or zigzag, you're creating another bump or twist in that. So yes, you can do it too much and yes, you can do it not enough. So right now I have a messy, ugly blob. If you look here, you can see that I have these little rings and that's what we're going for. So those are gonna stretch and you're gonna see layers of them as we roll this out. 
So I'm mashing it into a circle and I'm making sure that everything is sticking to itself, sticking to each other. So we're gonna start with this and we're gonna roll it out like we would any other piece of fondant. So let's go ahead and powder sugar. Not super heavy because we don't want it to... So the secret to rolling out fondant is you wanna have it nicely coated in powdered sugar so it doesn't glue itself to the table, but you want a little bit of sticking to the table so that it stretches and stays where you put it. And to coat this, that's it, so just a little bit. And you wanna make sure that there's no clumps on top here as well. Oh, Rebecca. Hey, Tanya, thank you for joining, that's so cool. I hope you guys had a good Easter and are doing well. All right, so now I'm just gonna roll out. And if you rolled out dough, it's really the same. You wanna start in the middle, press everything to the outside, and just keep going in a circle. You can pick it up, slide it around, whatever you want, so that it's easy to work with. And really what we're gonna do is roll it out and see what happens. So. The thing that I always make sure that my clients know when they get a marbled cake is that we're at the mercy of the fondant. You can't decide how many loops and swirls that you want on each side of this cake. It just does what it wants and you love it. So sometimes we roll it out and we're like, nope, not good enough. But most of the time, magic happens. And you can see how these colors are beautiful and coming together beautifully. I love it. I'm just going to push this out. So it's nice and thin. You want it to be thin. When it's too thick, it's very difficult to work with. It wants to be heavy and crack off the side of your cake. So I'm just making sure I'm not sticking to the table. I'm gonna rotate. We have this beautiful marbling. And I'll show you guys, once I have it rolled out, the other side. Because nine times out of 10, the back side is what I actually end up putting on top of the cake. I can't really explain it. It's the way that it's rolled out and pressed. The back, the, the underside is always the beautiful part. All right. So, you want it to be thick enough that it's not transparent, right? You don't want to see your hand through it, but you want it to be thin enough that it's light. All right, let me go grab my cake real quick. You guys can just marvel at this fondant. cake that was in the cooler. A cool cake, not frozen. Just refrigerated, already iced in buttercream. Is the magic weapon here. If it's too cold, it'll seize up. If it's soft, it will mush around. So, let's look at the other side. <clears throat> I'm losing my voice. I don't like that as much. I'm just gonna brush off any extra powdered sugar. I like the other side better. This has like a pinwheel effect and a lot of white. And I like this side better. All right, things I like about this side, we've got the fading where you can see other colors turning into other colors. I love that. Um, <clears throat> anything on the edge, Drink some water. I'm losing my voice. <clears throat> I spent the last couple hours running around and being wild with my three year old. Lots of screaming and playing. So you just pick it up and set it on your cake. If it's too thin, it will break. 
So I'm gonna press the top. Let me get here. Make sure there are no air bubbles on top. And then I'm just gonna go around the sides very gently. I'm not pressing it into the cake. I'm just smoothing it flat down. So think of it like a skirt and we're just smoothing out the wrinkles in the skirt. We're not pressing it onto the cake yet. We're just gonna slowly go around and do this. This gives your fondant time to stretch and react so you don't have wrinkles or rips. And when I'm lucky, it's perfect. But I'm almost never, ever, ever lucky. I shouldn't say that. Just almost never ever is our perfect cake. So I'm just going around a little bit by a little bit and it's stretching and you can see how it's just easier and it's sitting on the cake more and more. You are gonna wanna be time sensitive to this as it dries. So now I'm gonna start pushing it onto the cake. As it dries, it starts to crack in an alligator skin um, and be more likely to tear. So you do wanna go pretty quickly, which is why I'm not reading the comments right now. But throw me some hearts if you think this is gorgeous, please. All right, I'm getting to the bottom. And I'm just letting my pinky finger go around and attach it to the side. Oh, she's gonna be beautiful. All right, so now we have this tool called a fondant smoother. Thank you for the hearts, ladies and gentlemen. All right, so this is a great way to make sure everything is beautiful, attached, flat, right? No pressure for my fingers and no air bubbles. So we are nice and attached. Now we have this big excessive skirt. So we're gonna need to cut that off. Dry my hands, get rid of my colors. Ugh. These lights are hot. All right, Zacto knife, great for detail work. Pizza cutter is great for just getting rid of the excess. So if you ball up your excess pieces, you will not have a marble again. So it's a one-time shot here for the marbling. So we can use these pieces that are gorgeous for something else. You can make a monogram out of it. You can make hexagons. You can ball it up and it'll make it pretty purple. Okay. Get all that stuff off. Okay, so. We cut this so that we just roughly, we just aggressively and roughly cut it off. Now we're going to want to make it pretty. So I'm going to take the Zacto and I'm just going to go straight, see if I can do it so you guys can see, straight up and down, very slowly. I'm just letting the cake guide me. There is no such thing as a perfect cake, by the way. Um, I was talking to a decorator. Who works here um, she just had her 20th anniversary at classic cakes and she feels like she's had one perfect cake ever and a lot of that was of course skill but also just kind of getting lucky and magic happens there's no such thing as perfect cake there's all kinds of mistakes in this cake right now I can show you as well and I will I will point them out to you Okay, the reason I want to point out mistakes is because, guys, if you're decorating a cake, you're always going to see mistakes that nobody else is going to see. You're right up on it. You're doing it piece by piece. That's okay. Your cake is never going to be perfect, and it doesn't have to be. It needs to be delicious, and it needs to be beautiful. That's it. So, I don't know how well you guys can see, but there are some lines here where it's very dry, and the fondant colors didn't quite mold together perfectly you can see it again here so you have a little bit of a gap no one's ever going to notice that i don't care at all um when i cut off the bottom here i went too close so i've got a little bit of a gap that's floating um i would probably put a border on it i did it again over here because i was rushing 
Um, there's not nearly as many loops and swirls as I would have liked, but I feel like this right here is beautiful right here. That's my front. I think she's beautiful. So I just want you guys to think critically so that you can get better when you're decorating, but not critically so that you can't enjoy what you've made. So I'm going to scroll through these comments and see what we've got. Um, I know I missed some of these, but please ask me any questions. Throw me some comments. Tell me that you love it. Tell me what you don't like about it. You're not going to hurt my feelings at all. Um, would you order a beautiful blue and purple marbled cake? Um, should we add some gold to it? We could add some gold to it. Let's see. Let me get the powdered sugar off the table. I don't powder sugar my laptop. Um, I would love to know what you guys think. What questions you have. I know there were some questions up here when I was doing this. Yes, so um, Rebecca says she likes how the marbling made some gray. If you look carefully, and I don't know how well you guys can see, up here where the blue and the purple are fading over top of each other, you have this purpley gray kind of color. Um, and I think that's one of the cool things. We have some here as well where the blue um, is that you don't really you can't control all of the shades that come so you want to make sure that the colors that you're using work well together i think that's awesome pinks and oranges for summer would pop Ooh, i've never done pinks and orange you would have a lot of like corally color as they blend together that would be beautiful carrie asked if i have a good recipe for fondant i'm going to totally get powdered sugar all over my mouth um we don't share a recipe, it is um, something that we make in-house, but if you look online for a white chocolate based fondant, you will find something very similar to this, um, or probably, because there are only so many recipes in the world, um, probably easily find this recipe. Um, so you just want to make sure that you're looking for something that's stiff, not super soft. Um, and that's why I prefer the white chocolate based fondants. I feel like they're a little bit more forgiving. Um, or you can purchase, I believe it's called Dream Fondant, um, which is an awesome um, brand. It's very similar to what we use. Awesome. I think I got all the questions. Oh, the tiger cake. I don't know if I ever answered that. The tiger cake that we did, it's on our website um, under Sculpted Cakes. We did a massive... 3D Sculpted Tiger for a local author, Annie Sullivan. Um, amazing author, by the way, um, if you're interested in looking for a new book to read right now while you're stuck at home. Um, we're, she's about to have her third book launch party, I think later this year, her third book in the series. So we're super excited about doing a cake for that. But she wanted to do um, a 3D Tiger. And of course, yes, oh my God. Um, so we got to do a just massive 3D Sculpted Tiger. I mean, the head of this thing was like this big. It was huge. Um, so if you go to our website, classiccakescarmel.com, you'll see um, the picture of the Sculpted Tiger under Galleries Unsculpted. Um, it was covered in fondant, um, and that made making the texture um, for the fur a little bit easier. And then we actually airbrushed on the stripes and painted those on. Um, a lot of hand painting. The woman who does, who did that cake, we have a few people who do our sculpted cakes now. They all are, we're very fortunate to have an amazing group of very talented artists here. Um, and that tiger cake is one that Courtney did. Um, that one. Michelle, I think the colors blended very well. I'm actually kind of surprised how well they came out. Um, I wasn't sure. I haven't done like super bold colors like that before, um, side by side, at least not those colors. I like this right here. We have this like veiny line running through it. Um, awesome. So thank you so much for watching. Um, we are looking, like I said earlier, we're looking for 10 people to donate $10, classiccakescarmel.com. Um, and then we will have hit our goal for donating 3,000 cupcakes to the staff of Riley Children's Hospital. 
Um, so special thanks goes out to McFarland Foods and um, General Mills and Pillsbury for donating some of the supplies that we need for that. Um, and then we've had a ton of customers um, donating as well to just cover our supplies and the, the packaging. Um, there's a lot of restrictions now because of the virus that's out. Um, and so we have to individually package every cupcake and purchasing those packages is a little bit expensive and it's time consuming. So um, we are donating our time and we're asking you guys to donate to cover our supplies. So thank you so much. Um, my name is Megan Ritz and this is Classic Cakes. I'll see you next Tuesday.